Toll-like receptors, or TLR, are pathogen recognition receptors and are found on cell membranes. They are activated by binding to components of pathogen known as PAMP, Pathogen Associated Molecular Pattern, and once bound, that particular cell will secrete cytokines to assist in the inflammatory process. I drew the receptor looking like this before, but Geo Lee's image, published in Janeway's Immunology Edition 8, shows toll-like receptors looking more like this. Now there are 10 types of toll-like receptors in the human body, and are found in either the outer membrane or endosomal membrane. On the outer cell membrane, you can find TLR1 and 2, TLRs 2 and 6, TLR4, TLR5, and TLR10, whose function is unknown. And on endosomal membranes, TLR3, 7, 8, and 9 can be found. Uh, this is a mistake. This is meant to be TLR8, not TLR9. You might have realized that TLR1 and 2 are back to front, and another TLR2 and 6 are also back to front. This is because both these different TLRs have to bind with each other in order to be activated. Therefore, TLRs 1 and 2 are known as heterodimers. TLR2 and 6 are also heterodimers. TLRs 10 activation, as mentioned, is unknown. PAMPs also bind to TLR4, 5, and 10, but require two of the same TLRs to attach together and attach to the pathogen in order to be activated. TLRs 3, 7, 8, and 9, which are on endosomal membranes, target viruses that en enter via endocytosis, and also require both of the same TLRs to attach so that the two lower domains attached in order to be activated and initiates the process. So let's have a look at these different, what these different receptors bind to. So here is the cell's outer membrane again, and within the cell is an endosome. And heterodimers TLR1 and 2 and TLR2 and 6 are found on the outer membrane, as well as TLR4 and TLR5, and also TLR10, whose uh, activation is unknown, yet unknown. TLRs 3, 7, 8, and 9 are found on endosomal membranes, as mentioned before. So what binds to these different receptors? That is a question. Um, before we say that, remember that the TLRs, they are signaling receptors, so what their main outcome will be is to secrete cytokines, or pro-inflammatory cytokines, chemokines, to assist in the inflammatory process. So anyway, let's look at what these uh, different receptors bind to. So lipoproteins, lipoteochoic acids, and the cell wall, all of which are components of a pathogen, also known as PAMPs, are able to bind to the heterodimers, such as TLR1 and 2, and TLRs2 and 6. LPS, a component of a cell wall, and lipotoic acids, can bind to TLR4, which is the main TLR on pat macrophages. Pathogens flagella, the tail, can bind to TLR5s. Five. Five. Looking at the endosomal uh, toll-like receptors, viruses bind to these receptors. Double-stranded virus RNA binds to TLR3. Single-stranded RNA of a virus binds to TLR7 and 9, and the virus DNA can bind to TLR8. So now let's look more closely at these heterodimers and see how they work. And also let's look at the TLR4, the main TLR on macrophages, and also the endosomal TLR and see how they work and how they make cytokines, pro-inflammatory cytokines to assist in the immune response. So how does TLR1 and 2 and TLRs2 and 6 work, the heterodimers? Well, they work the same, so let's just look at one heterodimer, TLR2 or 1 and 2, as an example. Now remember that TLRs are signaling receptors, unlike the mannose and scavenger receptors, which engulf and destroy the pathogen. So let's see how TLR1 and 2 work. PAMP's lipoprotein, or lipotheochoic acid, is in the extracellular fluid. TLRs 1 and 2 bind to this PAMP and attach together, bringing its two lower domains together. Now this is the first step. The second step is that a cascade of events occur within the cytosol, but we won't really go into this that much because it's boring. But the final product is NFKB, anyway, and it, this is our step 3. Now NFKB is a transcription factor and can enter the nucleus where it synthesizes and transcribes the gene inside the nucleus 
for cytokines. Now this is our step four. So once producing these cytokines, the cytokines are then packaged up and sent via endocytosis in an endosome to be expelled out of the cell. So here endosome, it will get expelled out like duis and expelled out to enhance the immune response, for example by attracting more immune cells. Now this is our step five. So if we go back to the transcription factor, the final product, so-called NFKB, it's actually not the only transcription factor, there are many others. So going back to the heterodimers, we have the two receptors, maybe we'll just say it's TLR2 and 6 this time, and it binds to some PAMP such as a lipoprotein, which makes the both TLR's lower domains attach the so-called TIR's. Now this then initiates a cascade of events which result in transcription factors. So we talked about the NFKB which then enters the nucleus of that cell and transcribes the genes for cytokines and pro-inflammatory cytokines to assist in the immune response. Well, the final product can also be uh, an activator protein 1 or this one here, or AP1 which does exactly the same thing. It transcribes the genes for cytokines and pro-inflammatory cytokines, maybe different types. And there are other activator proteins, but this is the most popular. Now another typical one is the transcription factor interferon regulatory factor, or IRF. IRF transcribes genes for interferons, and so usually work through a virus stimulant. So that was how heterodimers work. Now we will see how the endosomal TLRs work now. So uh, here we have the cell again with uh, the outer membrane uh, which has the TLRs such as the heterodimers 1 and 2 and the TLR5 which connects to flagella, the tail of a pathogen. So endosomal TLRs work in the same way basically as the outer membrane ones, but these endosomal TLRs bound to virus components usually. So let's just say a virus gets in the cell and is engulfed in an endosome. TLRs3, for example, can bind to the double-stranded RNA of a virus within the endosome. But two, two of these TLRs3 have to bind together and bind to the, P, uh, to the D, uh, RNA so that the lower domains attach, which then initiates a cascade of events and leaves us with a familiar product interferon regulatory factor, or it can be other transcription factors. But it would most likely be this IRF, the interferon regulatory factor, because if the cell was infected by the virus, the cell would send out interferons. So anyway, this IRF, this interferon regulatory factor, does some transcription within the nucleus and encodes genes for interferons. The interferons are then sent out in packaged endosomes and are then transported towards the outer membrane. Typically, interferons alpha and beta are produced in this event. Now, the interferons then leave out targeting other cells in the area so that the other cells can't be infected and can fight off this particular virus that has infected this cell. So, that was how the endosomal TLRs work. Now, let's look at how the TLR4 works, which is important because these are the main pathogen recognition receptors on the macrophages. And it works a bit more, it, it's a bit more complex than the others. Well, not really, it's just got a couple of added extras. What's special about TLR4 is that it binds to LPS, a major cellular wall component of a gram-negative bacteria. But in order to bind to the gram-negative bacteria, TLR4 requires another protein called MD2 attached to its cleft. But not only this, another receptor is required called CD14 if for, in order for the TLR receptor to do its function. Now CD14 is a normal receptor on a macrophage, and without CD14 as a co-receptor for TLR, CD14 can work by itself as a receptor which initiates phagocytosis on a particular pathogen. Anyways, if the TLR is good at binding with this pathogen, it then initiates a cascade of events. With the final product, if you remember, can be NFKB, AP1, or IRF, or others. Anyway, and these transcription factors, for example, NFKB, then enters the nucleus and makes genes for cytokines, which then gets transported out of the cell to promote the immune and inflammatory response. So that was it for toll-like receptors. I hope that actually made sense to you. You can watch it again if that didn't make sense to you. Maybe it'll, it'll be more easier. Uh, but please comment and share. Please like and subscribe if you like. Thank you. Bye.